I sincerely hope that we are living the beginning of the end of one of the biggest tragedies of the 21st century, reflected a beaming United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres at the end of a week of Yemen peace talks in a secluded Swedish castle in front of the world's cameras. Yemeni rivals smiled to shaking hands with a bit of help from the United Nations chief. I told the United Nations Secretary General, there is no need for him to help bring us closer. Yemen's foreign minister, Khalid at Yemeni, later posted on his Twitter account about this crucial clasp. This is my brother. Despite his coup against the state and the destruction of the homeland which caused this human tragedy, as 2018 and drew a close the image of a Yemeni government minister and a senior Houthi official shaking hands on a deal, which included a surprising ceasefire in the strategic port city of Hudaydah, shot like an electric current around the world. The process, led by the United Nations, as third Yemen and white, Mart and Griffiths, marked the most significant breakthrough in five years of talks. Have you seen the video of the handshake? exclaimed a Yemeni friend, who added a bright happy emoji to her post, sent on the WhatsApp messaging service. Congratulatory statements cascaded from a multitude of aid agencies, who, deep in sounding the alarm for months about the world's worst humanitarian crisis becoming, unimaginably, even worse. But behind this Swedish moment, which provoked a rare hashtag of pound kid hope on social media, lies deep distrust. It still keeps warring sides on their backers a long way from peace. No sooner did the talks end, the Houthis described the Yemeni government as the UA solid controlled delegation, and Yemeni government officials privately accused their rivals, aligned with Iran of negotiating in bad faith. The immediate ceasefire in Hudaydo was soon broken. The truce is now largely holding, but imperfectly so, with each side accusing the other of violating it. No one expects it to be smooth, simple, or straightforward. The news from Sweden was exceptionally good. In part, that's because any news from Yemen has been extraordinarily bad. It happened because of a new international focus on Yemen's dire plight. It was present inside the sprawling Swedish castle and on phone lines to capitals which can make all the difference on the battlefield. We were blessed, a senior United Nations official tells me with palpable relief, and discussions between Yemeni enemies brought them a bit closer. We lay together, talked together. And we created a bit of warmth by sharing jokes about the cold weather, a member of the Yemeni government delegation explains. Other breakthroughs included the mechanics of a mass prisoner exchange which, if implemented, will bring joy and relief to thousands of families. An understanding was also reached to discuss a punishing sea job, the southwestern city of Taos. But, as Peter Salisbury of the International Crisis Group points out, the agreements reached in Stockholm reflect a strong humanitarian impulse rather than strategic calculations. There was no consensus in Stockholm on the parameters of a roadmap to us peace. The United Kingdom, as Foreign Secretary Jeremy Hunt admits that well, there was light at the end of the tunnel. Yemen was still very much in the tunnel. The political wrangling at the United Nations Security Council over the resolution passed to underpin the agreements was all too familiar. Iran's involvement in this conflict continues to be the principal preoccupation of the Saudi-led coalition. The United States administration clearly sees the Iran dimension. An Arab foreign minister emphasizes with satisfaction, a major litmus test will be the critical ceasefire in the port city of Hudaydah, the vital lifeline for humanitarian aid which helps feed nearly two-thirds of Yemen's population.
on redeployment committee is now on the ground, headed by the United Nations military expert, the former Dutch General Patrick C. A. M. M. A. E. T. and includes members from the war insides. The language in this imperfect last-minute deal was necessarily weak. It's already being interpreted in conflicting ways. The agreement says local security forces will assume control once the health is pulled out of the main port, as will last two others, followed by a mutual withdrawal of hobby fighters as well as pro-government forces of must just a few miles outside Hudaydah. Hathi officials are insisting some of their forces and civil servants will fill the vacuum. The Yemeni government is making clear it wants its own ministries to take charge. Discussions are also underway in countries not directly involved in this conflict about providing observers for a demilitarized zone around this strategic area. The establishment of a ceasefire in Hudaydah is a crucial first step. Toward averting our tried famine in Yemen, and perhaps even toward ending the war, says Just Hilterman of the International Crisis Group. Yet the good intentions of the fighting parties should not be taken for granted. This is why it is critical that there be a strong United Nations-led monitoring mechanism with full international backing. In Yemen's war, there are spoilers galore, he says. Other eyes will be on this tour. The Americans have given us guarantees they will use their satellite technology to ensure the healthy withdrawal takes place. An Arab official in the Saudi-led coalition tells me, enhanced United States engagement in this process has been pivotal. The murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi in the Saudi consulate in Istanbul on 2 October has concentrated minds in Washington on its relationship with the kingdom, including its military support in Yemen, as anger mounted in the United States Congress. Both Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and Secretary of Defense Jim Mattis called for a ceasefire and a commitment to the Stockholm process. Then, in the last 36 hours of talks, Secretary Mattis and other senior officials were on the phone to the Saudi and Emirati capitals. What had been a growing sense that a major assault on Hudaydah was all but inevitable shifted to a new focus on a truce. The Saudi Crown Prince, Mohammed bin Salman, intervened personally at least three times to put pressure on the Yemeni government delegation. One Western files disclosed about the involvement of the kingdom's de facto ruler, who is regarded as the architect of its war in Yemen. On the ground, the UA-led forces around Hudaydah had all but encircled this coveted stretch of land on the Red Sea coast. But the UA knew what could be next months of bloody street to street, fighting against the well-entrenched healthy fighters and horrific Headlines which would intensify outrage in the new United States Congress and beyond over the human cost of this conflict. The ceasefire is not the same as a knockout below, but it's definitely the next best thing, an Arab diplomat in the coalition tells me. And, rather hopefully, he adds, this will now be a Yemeni process which takes pressure off the coalition. Observers believe the Houthis also knew it was only a matter of time before they lost Hudaydah militarily. The ceasefire also offered them a way out. The next round of talks, set far late than you dare in, will be tougher. Yemen's year ends with less pessimism, even if no one is certain to start with more surprises as well as setbacks. A popular tourist attraction has become the latest Chinese company to show solidarity with Hu Awa's chief finance officer, Man Wanzhou, who was arrested in Canada on 1 December. Shannon Mountain Scenic Park in eastern Hainan province said it would waive the $9.65 yuan ticket fee for anyone carrying a Hu Awa phone. Miss Man, who was given bail in Canada, 
faces extradition to the United States on charges of breaking Iran sanctions. Her case has up tensions with China. Use Huawei phones. Shoot grand photos on the mountain. A notice on the Shannon Park's social media account said, We wish friends around the world, who's part who away success and bliss. The offer would last until 29 December.